Good morning, friends. <laughs> my name is Mindy Harrop Vincent. My sobriety date is April 22nd, 2007. Or <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, or as I would say in drug court, I have 1,548 days clean. <laughs> I graduated felony drug court in the third district court of Salt Lake City, Utah in July of 2008. I took my first drink when I was 10, was smoking crack and meth at 13, and cooking meth by 15. I have been in and out of jails and institutions since I was 13 years old. I had long resigned to the fact that a drug addict was all I would ever be, and I would spend the rest of my life going in and out of prison. That mindset changed when I had my son. Suddenly, I wanted more, and I wanted to be something and someone. I wanted to give him the world, but unfortunately, I was still an addict, and it hurts to say, but not even the love for my child could get me sober. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I couldn't stay sober for even a week, and I'm, when I had everything to lose or even everything to gain, I would stick a needle in my arm or a pipe in my mouth every single time. I lost custody of my son twice because of this disease. I have lost everything I own and been homeless more times than I can count. Probation didn't work for me, jail didn't work for me, and treatment by itself didn't work for me. When I finally hit my last rock bottom and I finally admitted I was powerless, I knew I could no longer try to fight this fight on my own. Oops. <laughs> I knew about drug court and I hoped it could work for me too, so I started the process of being screened for acceptance into the program. When I was accepted, it was certainly not because I was likely to succeed. I have never complied with a court order in my entire life, and my restitution was almost three times the maximum amount they allow into drug court. But I did meet the qualification of a habitual criminal drug addict who was on her last chance in life, and I desperately needed help. When I started drug court, I was in jail, of course, and I had my own plans as to where I was going and how I was going to do drug court. I am so grateful that my drug court team did not have the same plans for me. <laughs> Mark Augustine, if you're out there, that's you. <laughs> I was sent to the VOA Women's and Children's Center where I stayed until I went into residential treatment at the Haven. I was the first person to move into their transitional sober living facility and within six months of starting drug court, I regained full custody of my son. While in drug court, <laughs> While in drug court, I was federally indicted, and when I stood before the judge for sentencing, he saw that I had graduated drug court 10 days prior to my sentencing, and I had 14 months of sobriety. He told me that gave him the little bit of hope that he needed, that for the first time in my life, I was on the right track, and even though it was against every recommendation and his better judgment, he was going to grant me a downward departure and go outside of my federal sentencing guidelines and put me on home confinement instead of sending me to prison. <laughs> Drug court did better than save my life. Drug court changed my life. Since graduating drug court, I have gotten married to an incredible man who walks this journey of recovery with me. I have a beautiful 19-month-old daughter at home who has never seen me drink or use. I successfully terminated off federal probation three years early, and last fall I graduated cum laude from Utah Valley University. <laughs> Which makes me the first college graduate in my family. I was accepted. <laughs> I have been accepted to the Masters of Social Work program at the University of Utah, which I will start in a few weeks. <laughs> After which I will continue on to get my PhD in social work and I will work in this field and I will give back to others what has been given to me for the rest of my life. I have been told that sobriety is the prerequisite for recovery, and drug court helped me to maintain sobriety long enough for me to find recovery. And my heart is so full of gratitude. Thank you so much, drug court.
Hi, my name is Gabriel Vincent. I'm Mindy's husband. It's an honor to be standing here with my family today celebrating recovery. I just want to say how grateful I am that drug court gave Mindy the chance and the tools to succeed. She's amazing. I'm very proud of her accomplishments. I love her very much. Thank you, drug court, for helping my wife become the woman she is today. Hi, my name is Nicholas, <laughs> and Mindy is my mom. My mom and me have a very special bond. When I was little, it was very hard for me, for me to be away from her. Are you going to take her? Oh, God. <laughs> She couldn't take care of me because she was on drugs, and I was afraid drugs were going to kill her. Today my life is totally different. I haven't had to live away from my mom for a very long time. She doesn't forget to pick me up or miss out on my life. She comes to everything for me and supports me in everything I do. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so proud of my mom, and I love her so, so much. Thank you, Drug Court, for helping my family. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Jeremy. I started drinking uh, at a young age uh, of 11 years old. For the next 15 years, uh, there wasn't a time that I wasn't arrested uh, for an alcohol offense. Everyone in my family, aside from my mother, is an uh, alcoholic or an addict. Um, I was convicted. <laughs> of <laughs> I have five DUIs and I really should have nine uh, thank attorneys for that um, my life uh, was just a constant downward spiral in and out of jail I came back to Minnesota uh, after uh, living in Southern California uh, I was found in an alley after a cocaine and alcohol overdose. Uh, I came home to try to get the support of uh, my family, and that led into another alcohol binge, which sat me in front of uh, Judge Smith in Minnesota and Judge Corey Wawasik here. And looking down the barrel of a three-year prison sentence, I was scared for my life, knowing that if I go to prison, my life was over. Not that I was afraid of what was gonna happen in prison, I was afraid that I would adapt to prison and I would become a good prisoner, surrounded by other criminals and I would never, I would never make it out of that cycle. Because of the, the court, the uh, drug court that we have in Minnesota, I struggled three, almost four years to get through it. Uh, I made it through. I've been sober for uh, six years next month. I have a college degree. I have the respect of my family, my friends. But more, more than that, uh, I'm grateful for the program. Not only did they give me a life, but they, in my 
in my family, for, for my future children, they broke the cycle of addiction. It, it stops with me and it doesn't have to go on anymore. And everybody out there, a lot of, a lot of you don't take the, the, the respect or the, you know, it's, it's all because of you that I'm not dead, that I'm not in prison, and <laughs> that I have amazing friends, and that I actually have a life again. And I just want to thank everybody here, especially the judge, my friend, Corey Wawasek. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Elizabeth Johnson. I am also a drug court graduate. I graduated in 2000. I have been sober uh, from drugs for 10 and a half years. When I was admitted into drug court, I was charged with a class four felony, um, in essence, for lying. Um, they, it was disorderly conduct. The lying was caused by drug use. I had started drug use uh, primarily with marijuana as early as 13 or 14 years old. Um, during high school, I maintained straight A's, although I didn't bring books home, so that was the grace of God. But for a while, I was able to hide it. Um, I did get in trouble um, running with the, the wrong crowd. Now, at that point, I was arrested I hired a couple good lawyers. They got me into this drug court program, and I thought, okay, I can get my charges dismissed. I was uh, facing a felony, and I had a lifelong dream of becoming a lawyer. Um, I would dress up as a lawyer for career day in first, second grade, and wear oversized shoes and carry my briefcase. So I slowly seen my career slipping through my fingers um, into drug court. Our drug court was actually started in 1999 by our assistant state's attorney, Jim Glasgow. Um, that is now the man who hired me in December 1st of 2010. <laughs> During drug court, I initially had the intention of going in to get my charges dismissed because I could see that as a quick out. Um, as soon as I got in there, I realized what a fantastic program it was. Um, they do put you through an intensive program. It's a wonderful family and lifelong friends. Uh, after graduation of drug court, I immediately re-enrolled in school, graduated law school last May, took the bar in July. I was admitted to practice November 4th. <laughs> Thank you. So, as of December 1st, I am an assistant state's attorney in Will County. Um, I do prosecute mi criminal misdemeanors right now. I'm working my way up. Um, but I do a lot of drug court involvement. I've been traveling to different counties and speaking, and also in my, my church in my hometown, um, we did celebrate a celebrate or start a celebrate recovery program. Um, so I hope no matter where my future and career takes me that I can remain involved and touch someone's life. And drug court makes all the difference. I would have never made it to where I wanted to be since a child had I had a felony conviction. Thank you. Hi, my name's Britt. Um, I graduated in um, 2009 from uh, Montgomery County Drug Court. Uh, my addiction kind of started uh, when I was 14 years old. Uh, injured a, my back and uh, started taking painkillers. Um, took painkillers um, from the time I was 14 
um, all the way up until uh, I got arrested in 2007. Um, it started with painkillers and, and eventually led to other things and uh, wound up in jail. Um, I had uh, the unique opportunity, I guess, to have my sentencing judge was also the judge that um, ran the drug court and um, Judge O'Neill gave me the opportunity to um, get out of jail early and into drug court. Um, I, I kind of, uh, I took that opportunity and uh, never looked back. Um, <laughs> The people in drug court, uh, there were three people that really kind of were an intricate part in helping me along and, um, you know, kind of pushing me through it. Um, you know, Judge O'Neill, like I said, he kind of knew me coming into the program, so I felt like that was kind of a benefit for me. Um, my PO, Terry Weber, was just a great person that I could bounce stuff off of and, and she really kind of um, uh, helped me realize things and then I was working with a counselor, Clint, and um, he just kind of gave me really good insight. Um, but all the success that I've had since I graduated drug court um, was because of drug court. It gave me the foundation that um, between drug court actually and the 12 step, it gave me the foundation to kind of move on uh, with my life and taught me really how to live uh, without drugs and uh, gave me the opportunity. I met this wonderful girl here, um, my biggest fan, big support for me. Um, I went back to school, I'm getting my degree and I'm also coaching football, um, which is you know, my passion. So I owe it all to drug court. Hi, I'm Candace Singer, and I'm a person in long-term recovery, which means I haven't used drugs or alcohol for nine years. And catch my breath. I'm also a person in long-term recovery from a mental illness, which means that I haven't had symptoms for about seven years. First, let me say that um, I was not an easy client. I, uh, I had many convictions, serious convictions, and, um, and I thought I knew something. So, but my team was committed and, and continued to work with me. I, um, when I came to drug court, I had lost everything. I was homeless, penniless, toothless, um, and hopelessly addicted to methamphetamine. I had lost my career. I never thought that I would have a meaningful life again. I, um, I didn't think I would ever have children. Honk, honk. <laughs> um, I couldn't have children, and, um, and I always intended to adopt. But now I had a criminal record, so I wouldn't be able to adopt. So I, I didn't know if I wanted to live. Um, I. Uh, but with drug court, um, you know, I couldn't, I struggled. And the first year and a half was really difficult. I couldn't think clearly. I, um, but with drug court, they would, they guided me when I couldn't guide myself. They, <laughs> they, um, they directed me when I could not direct myself. They gave me structure when I had none for myself. And, um, and eventually, after about a year and a half, some of the obsessions to use left, and I started to gain some hope. Um, the relationship with my drug court probation officer and the court became important to me, so um, I wanted their respect, and so I worked really hard to gain it. And today, as a result of drug court, I am the um, lead policy analyst at the National Council for, for 
alcoholism and drug dependence, New Jersey. I make decisions about the policies we're going to pursue, and one of the major policies I'm getting to pursue this year is the expansion of drug courts in New Jersey. I regained my family and was able to be by my mother's side um, before she died and by her bedside when she died. Drug court was there for me um, to help me through that. I, um, I'm a homeowner, I'm a sponsor to other women, but my, my greatest achievement... No, I want to get down. I want my, to get down. My greatest achievement is her. And, um, <laughs> Like I said, I couldn't have children, but um, with donor eggs and donor sperm and the support of drug court and knowing they were there should I fall, gave me the courage at age, four, at age 47 to give birth to this beautiful, mir miraculous child. And in the delivery room, the person that had put me in jail for a short sanction years earlier was there by my side in the delivery room, my drug court probation officer, and held my hand while I gave birth to her. So my life has come full circle, and I'm only it's 100% better than it ever was, and I want to live today, and I love being clean. Thank you. Everybody. My name is Robert Brubeck, and my last arrest was February 2nd, 2004. I was in a holding cell when a task force agent walked in and he said to me, Mr. Brubeck, when I catch you manufacturing methamphetamine, you will do 85% of 30 years, and he walked out. Um, I don't know how many arrests that made, however, it would become my sixth felony conviction. I had drank, smoked, snorted, injected, dealt, and manufactured about everything known at that time. I was truly a miserable person the day I walked into the Boone County Drug Court on May 11, 2005. It was my 45th birthday. And my life has not been the same since. When, ju when the judge asked me to write why I needed treatment, I wrote back, Robert finally realizes he doesn't know what's best for Robert. Then she asked me about my triggers, and I wrote, anything and everything. It's raining, it's sunny, I'm happy, I'm sad. What you say, what you don't say, I just get high. Today I am a CRADC counselor at the Reality House programs, and I work directly with the same drug court I graduated from six years ago. I'm a senior in college, and I have a 3.25 GPA. I have been a welcome. I have been a welcome guest at the judge's house on more than one occasion, including Thanksgiving dinner last year. I have 2,314 days of court-ordered sobriety that began on March 16th of 2005. My father died in 1988, and he never saw me sober. I didn't attend his funeral because I had a felony warrant, and he was a, police, a, he was a chief of police. My sister used to tell her children if they didn't straighten up, they were going to wind up like their Uncle Robert. I'm sure my father was not proud when he had to say, yes, that's my son in the paper again. However, on September 23rd of 2010, when our drug court appeared in the local paper and on the cover of All Rise, 
as one of the 10 mentoring courts in the nation, there I stood. I know my father would have said, yes, that's my son in the paper, and I'm so proud of him today. And Uncle Robert is a pretty good thing to be. My friend Rob Harrison always said, get in the middle of the boat. Give me a year of your life, and if you don't like what you have at the end of the year, I will refund your misery. <laughs> Ira Davis and Mark Thompson are my sponsors, who often remind me that when I'm alone with my own thoughts, I'm in a bad neighborhood talking with an idiot. Judge Christine Carpenter, Mike Principelli, who was my counselor, Amanda Douglas, who was my PO, and Stephanie Morell, our prosecuting attorney, are all people I used to consider my enemies. They are all here today. They always support me and are people I consider my friends. Thank you all for the greatest birthday present I have ever received. Good morning. My name is Mark Racco, and um, I uh, went into drug court on March 20th, 2009, and um, I'm standing here before you with uh, over two, two years and three and a half months clean and sober today. I got into drugs when, uh, when I was fairly young. I had just come out of film school, and, um, and I, you know, at a very young age, you know, attained a good degree of, of success in my field, and drugs kind of became sort of a, uh, an occupational hazard in my business. I'm from Los Angeles, California, and, um, and they took me on a road that I, I really couldn't stop. And by the time um, my intervention happened, uh, courtesy of the Los Angeles Police Department, <laughs> I, uh, I was completely unemployable, as you can see. <laughs> that was my, uh, my camera-ready look, by the way. <laughs> I, I wasn't fit to direct traffic. Um, and. Uh, and I had been a, you know, a fairly successful filmmaker um, as a young man and uh, worked with many of the, uh, as a music video director, worked with some of the artists that were in this wonderful presentation um, that you saw um, coming into this, this amazing event. And, um, and I was at a place where uh, I wasn't fit to do anything anymore. And, uh, and I was out of chances. And... Um, I basically begged my public defender, I said, for one more chance. I said, please put me in that courtroom. And they said, Mr. Racco, you are a habitual narcotics offender. There's, there's, uh, we've given you every chance we can give you. Um, you know, the best thing we can do for you is send you to state prison for 13 months. And I said, please, just put me in that drug courtroom. Let me talk to the judge. And, um, and he said, okay, they're not gonna listen. And uh, so I was being led into that courtroom in handcuffs. You want to talk about step one? <laughs> Powerless and unmanageable. And I'm shuffling down that hallway, and I'm praying. You want to talk about step two? Coming to believe that a power greater than myself could restore me to sanity. And I'm being led into that courtroom, and I sit down, and they call my name and they announce my name, and I stand up, and I look over, and out of the blue, there's a man sitting in that courtroom that I recognized from, from AA. And, um, and he stood up, and he looked over at me, and he said, hello, Mark. <laughs> and that man 
is Earl Hightower, who happens to be sitting over here in the first row. And Earl walked over to me, because he recognized me, and he, uh, he said, Mark, he said, you're in a pretty tough spot. He said, if there's anything I can do for you, you tell me now. And I told him, I said, I could sure use a sponsor. <laughs> and he said, done. And he poked me in the chest. And uh, you want to talk about step three, making a decision? They admitted me into drug court that day with Earl's support. And I went through the 18-month program. And it was very difficult. They talked about how hard it is in this program. It is very hard. Uh, let me tell you, you know, um, it was not easy. Uh, however, I completed that program and I got my life back on track. And I worked with Earl and I went through the 12 steps. And um, after graduation, I started to get my career back. I became employable again. Um, I'm now directing again. And it had been. It had been over 10 years since I'd been, you know, anywhere near the level that I'm at in my field now. And I just wanted to sincerely thank, number one, personally, my sponsor, Earl Hightower, for believing in me uh, when I didn't even know if I believed in myself anymore. And um, uh, the C CEO, West Huddleston, um, Commissioner Jane Godfrey, at LAX Drug Court, uh, my public defender, Richard Herzog, uh, my counselor, Richard McCauley at Clare Drug Court, and uh, Dr. Howard Samuels at the Hills Treatment Center, all for playing significant roles in my recovery. I'm also now working in recovery part-time at the Hills Treatment Center and, that, and getting an opportunity to give back. <laughs> which. I didn't see any of this coming. I sincerely thought my life was done, you know. And I also want to especially thank my daughters, Luma and Isabella Racco, and Luma's here with me today, and my fiance, Danielle Simons, who are here with me and supporting me here in Washington. Uh, they're unconditionally supportive and loving and have shown up for me. And I just, I sincerely want to thank all of you drug court professionals who are out here today, who have collected for this conference, because what you guys do here uh, has completely changed my life. And, and I just want to sincerely thank you from the bottom of my heart. And drug court works, and thank you for giving us all our lives back. Thanks. Congratulations, Mark. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. I'm sincerely thankful for the drug court and how it's changed your life. You're truly an inspiration to me, and I love you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. Um, thank you so much, uh, Drug Court, for giving me my dad back. Greetings, greetings. My name is Kevin Burnham. Um, I am also a Drug Court graduate. Came through the Baltimore, Maryland area. My last arrest. Okay, okay, Baltimore. My last arrest was March 6, 2008. Man, drug court, first of all, let me thank God for giving me the breath of life. <laughs> let me thank my angel, who I know is angel, my moms, for bearing with me time and time again. <laughs> See, I was the kid who had a great imagination, so I would create a lot of images in myself. 
I noticed that I came from a hard neighborhood, right? And I was different from them, but I wanted to be so much like them, so drugs became my way I could do that. I didn't know that I was going to end up stealing from my mother. I didn't know I was going to end up abandoning my children or robbing any one of you. I didn't know that. And so many times, listen, I tried to get clean, y'all. I, I did all the remedies. I, I tried them all. I tried them all. You name it, I tried it. Sight wards, I was there, okay? I kept getting arrested, but I wouldn't go to prison. So I thought I was being lucky, right? But I would get right out and go back and do the same thing that put me in the same situation again, every time. Then I'm like, wow, you know? So I was finding out that prison had nothing to do about bars and it had everything to do about me inside of me. And then they used to call me can't get right because I would always try to get clean, but I never stayed clean. And you know what? Let me tell you something. Until I changed my mind, because I bought that, and then I got arrested, or did I get rescued? Because drug court gave me an opportunity to find me, because I had fought the fight, right? So once I got in drug court, you know what? I was the model drug court guy. I went to all the programs, got put out the treatment house. Let me let you know that, because guess what? It didn't stop me. I went and told my PO, PO Wallace, this is what it is. Here's what he told me. He said, Kevin, Continue to do what you're doing, and guess what? You're going to be fine. I wind up creating a relationship with this man. We, we actually, actually went to the inauguration together. From that point on, Judge Houston, love Judge Houston, Judge Karaksic, they, they supported me. They gave me all the resources. Once I graduated, right? See, because I'm going to let you know something. I knew that it wasn't the end of something. It was actually the beginning of something. So now where I'm at today is I have a company that I've done called Inevitable Enterprise because I couldn't run for myself no longer. So now I'm on a talk show every Sunday in Baltimore region. Um, I have a poet under me. I have also, I have an author under me, but I am also a poet. And listen, you know what, Wes, thank you, Wes, thank you, Bree. They gave me my own booth so you can see me in the expo, but I want to leave you with something just to let you know what I do. Because <laughs> I understand this, and for those, you may understand this, this is what I call this freedom. And she's scared, y'all, so I got a hold her. <laughs> my mom was off course. But my soul knows the tablets. Still, I, I walk the fine line between necessity and the habit. Food sustained the body, but drugs altered the brain. I ate food for survival, but I did drugs to ease my pain. I think back on the time, look, I had a hunger for some love, and I couldn't find it in myself. So look, I replaced it with some drugs, and I couldn't see past the snow. Man, this was my coldest winter ever. And someone asked me, Kevin, Kevin, will you ever leave the storm? And I went from maybe, probably, to never. These birth pains I had to sever, like cutting in the umbilical cord. I was trying to serve two masters, the devil and the Lord. But look, one of them got jealous, so I pulled out the sword. One of these had to go. This I knew for sure. So I started to balance things out, so I jumped on the scales, thinking what was best for me. Hold up, couldn't let the darkness prevail. My Savior was crucified for my sins. Read the scriptures for details. And I started to see more clearly, and from my eyes fell the scales. Look, that little speck of light in the darkness was all that I need. And no longer do I suffer in silence because he already did that for me. So when they asked me, Kevin, Kevin, what took you so long? I'll tell them that he did that just for me. Because if i never been in jail spiritually, then how would I know that I was free? The Parade of Transformation.
That's it. Have a great conference. 1.3 million people have been saved as a result of drug court. These are just a few faces, a few voices. Enjoy the conference, and please come down and thank these graduates. Enjoy the day.